Hello, welcome to this quick demonstration on multi-cluster OpenShift with F5 Big IP, which enables to distribute Kubernetes workloads across clusters in a per application basis. First, it will be demonstrated a multi-cluster deployment using OpenShift's default router. Lastly, we will cover the high availability setup of this solution. In our sample environment, we are going to deploy three applications, red, green, and blue. Each application will be exposed in a different URL of different fully qualified domain names. All these applications will be hosted in the same VIP. The applications are going to be deployed in three OpenShift clusters as shown in the slide. Notice that the three clusters are not mirror of each other. Each cluster has different applications hosted. How this feature works is as follows. We are going to receive requests in a single VIP and this VIP will perform load balancing in a per request basis to each cluster depending on the URL and the load balancing method chosen. In this demonstration, instead of sending the request to the application spots directly, we will be sending the request to the ingress controller. In this case, we are using OpenShift's default router, but it could be any other ingress controller, service mesh, or API manager. Let's see how it looks like from a Kubernetes manifest point of view. The applications are published in the internal ingress controller, in this case, OpenShift's router default instance, hence using the route resource. In this case, we have one route resource for each application in the corresponding cluster, and this doesn't change at all from the point of view of the multi-cluster configuration. This configuration is also transparent to the PIP. Typically, DevOps will be in charge of doing the internal ingress configuration and NetOps the external side. For configuring the BigIP, we will define a separate layer 7 route manifest, in this example using BigIP's own virtual server resource type, and there will be a one-to-one -one mapping between these layer 7 routes and the layer 7 routes defined for the ingress controller, in this example the OpenShift route manifest. Note that each PKP virtual server manifest uses its own service manifest, even all the services shown point to the same ingress controller in this example. This allows to have independent monitoring for each application and ultimately a per application multi-cluster load balancing. Let's see next how these manifests are applied. The OpenShift route manifests are applied in all clusters where the applications are deployed. As mentioned previously, these manifests don't require any modification. The new services manifest, consumed by the big IP, will also be in all clusters where the applications are deployed. On the other hand, the virtual server manifest, used to configure the layer 7 routes in the big IP, will need to be defined only where we have deployed the CIS operator for the big IP. Let's see how this looks in the actual environment. Before I show you the actual manifest, let me introduce you a script I used to operate with all clusters of the deployment. I call this script run clusters and iterates over the clusters specified in an environment variable. In this case, we are using three clusters named OCP1, OCP2, and OCP3. Using this run clusters script, next it is shown the OpenShift route resources as indicated in the previous slides. It can be seen that we don't have deployed all applications in all clusters. Application blue is in all three clusters, application green is in clusters 1 and 3, and application red is in clusters 1 and 2. Next, we check the services manifest that will be used for the big IP in the first tier. The services always point to the ingress controller, which in this case is the OpenShift router in the OpenShift ingress namespace. It can be seen that for each OpenShift route defined in the application's namespace, second tier, it is defined as service for the big IP in the first tier. This is the one-to-one -one mapping mentioned in the slides. Please don't confuse these services with the ones defined for the route resources in the first tier. Those are defined in the application's namespace instead. Finally, we are going to show the manifest for the big IP used to define the layer 7 routes in the tier 1. For this, we use the virtual server CRDs in this example. This must be in the same namespace as the ingress controllers as well. 
Notice from the output that these CRDs are defined only in clusters OCP1 and OCP2. This is because in these clusters is where the CIS operators are running. If we pay attention to the output, it can be observed that the status and IP address in cluster OCP2 has not been populated. This is because we are running the primary CIS operators in cluster OCP1 and the secondaries in OCP2, and these ones have been in standby so far. Let's see now how these manifests are implemented in the Big IP. In this demo, we are writing the configuration to the MC to tier partition, where we find a regular virtual server for implementing all FQDN service in all three clusters. In this case, we haven't given a name for the virtual server CRD, so it is using a default virtual server name based on the IP address used. This IP address is automatically assigned by the F5 IPAM operator. In the pool section, we can observe that there is one pool per service manifest across the clusters. That is, each pool contains all ingress controller endpoints in all clusters matching the same service name. The pools are monitored individually, providing a two-tier deployment with application visibility. If we check the different pools, we find that the pool members are the OpenShift router's IP address. This is because in this demo we are using the default OpenShift router instance, which uses host network access, and the single node OpenShift deployment. Hence, we have only one pool member per cluster. In a production environment, I would recommend the use of cluster IP mode and a separate instance of the OpenShift router for application usage. You can find more information about this in the GitHub repository of this demo. Next, we will send some traffic to the three applications and we will observe how the traffic is distributed. You can see in the screen three while loops sending traffic to the three applications, red, green, and blue, hosting the URLs www.multicluster.com, www.multicluster.com slash account, and shop.multicluster.com. Each application prints the cluster where it is hosted and the URL it is serving. When we start running the scripts, we can already see how the traffic is distributed across the clusters and that each application is hosted in different clusters. If we go back again to the BKP user interface, we can check the statistics of each application individually and appreciate how in this case, given that we are using round-robin load balancing, we are spreading the request through all clusters evenly. Next, we are going to give an overview of how high availability works. In a typical deployment with two big IPs, we are going to have two CIS operator instances per big IP. One is going to be the primary in charge of pushing the configuration to its big IP, and the secondary, which acts as a backup when the primary fails. The secondary checks the primary's ready endpoint to validate that the primary is available. It can connect to its big IP and to the local Kubernetes API. These secondary instances will be hosted in a separate OpenShift cluster for redundancy. So far, we have described CIS high availability. But what about Big IP high availability and its dependency on CIS? What if the two CIS instances of a given Big IP are not operational? For handling this case, the HA Groups facility is used. This allows to monitor all CIS instances and calculate an score to compare with the peer Big IP. The peer Big IP will check the availability of its CIS instances. If both CIS instances are not operational in the active Big IP, and the peer Big IP has at least one CIS instance available, the HA Group facility will perform a Big IP failover. To expose the ready endpoints, we make use of node port services, so we don't care in which node the CIS instances are running. These node ports are also used by the secondary instances, yet it is not shown in the diagram for clarity of the arrows. Let's see how this looks in OpenShift. We check the deployments in the namespace for CIS in all clusters, and we can see that only the clusters OCP1 and OCP2 have deployments in them. We have set up in OCP1 the primary CIS instances and in OCP2 the secondary CIS instances for both big IPs. We can see that each cluster has also an instance of the IPAN controller, which is used to allocate IP addresses for the VIPs. 
The IPAM controllers should share the same database. In this case, for non-production usage purposes, we are using an NFS persistent volume. Let's see how it looks in the big IPs. As part of the HA groups configuration, we must create manually two pools in the common partition, one for each big IP. This will be monitoring the CIS instances endpoints with an HTTP monitor. The pool members are node port services pointing to the CIS instances. These pools are referenced in the HA configuration where in each PKP we will be using its own pool. In the case of BKP1, this will be the BKP1 CIS health check pool, which has a weight of 20. We will find a symmetric configuration in the BKP2. Note it is configured an active bonus of 15, which allows triggering the failover only when the two CIS instances of the local BKP are down. Let's demonstrate this capability. We will keep refreshing the HA groups page to show the overall HA status, and at the bottom, you will see how we will delete one by one with a pause in between the CIS instances of Big IP1 only. When the HA group monitor declares one of the CIS instances down, it doesn't fail over because there is one CIS instance alive. This is achieved with the active bonus. After the second CIS instance is deleted and the HA group monitor declares the second CIS instance down, it performs failover to the peer BKP, effectively keeping the deployment operational in all circumstances. I hope you have enjoyed this demo. You can access the scripts and manifests used in this demo in the link provided below. Thank you.